so Trinkoff imaging was developed uh, by making specialized cameras that pick up the, the tiny little Cherenkov signal that comes off of patients when they get radiation therapy. And so uh, this has been known for decades for, uh, that little tiny light signal comes off of the tissue when it gets irradiated, but it was so faint that there's no way to capture it. And so these cameras, uh, they're synchronized to linear accelerator uh, pulses. And so they capture the little bursts of light that come out. And so it's the first time in history that we can actually image radiation dose as it hits people's tissue. So here's one case, it was a patient who was challenging to position because she had mobility issues with her arm and so could not lift her arm up. And so even though she was aligned according to the Align RT every day, we actually could see distortions of the dose, the surface dose or surface Cherenkov image uh, day to day. And so here you see it a little high on the contralateral breast, same thing on this day. And then they compensated a bit the other direction and it's a little high on the shoulder here. And then by this day, June 11th, it's about right. Um, but you know, dose to the contralateral breast is actually well known to be a, an issue in radiotherapy. And so this is something we're starting to look at more. Other types of things we've seen is dose to the chin. Uh, again, sometimes the patient has their chin lower than other days, and so uh, we've seen this a couple times now where there's been Trenkoff light coming off the chin. And, um, and then another case of a treatment to a lower limb, a leg, and uh, the, this patient was planned with the other leg, the contralateral leg, up in the air, but then uh, they were tired and asked if they could put the leg down, uh, and so the therapist said, fine, but then subsequently realized they should check the Trinkoff image to see if there was dose to that contralateral leg because they didn't, they couldn't tell at the time. And in this case, it was fine, but it was a good indication where they actually used Trinkoff imaging. We've seen a number of these cases of bolus placement where it's just a little bit off the midline, for example. And so you see the bolus on top of the chest wall here, the Trinkoff coming through it. And this is actually a, a product called clear bolus, so the light goes through it. Uh, but you can see on the lower image here, the midline positioning of the bolus was a little bit, a couple of inches off where it should be. And so again, just not ideally placed. And then this was another case where the plan had uh, inadvertent uh, MLC leaf left open. Um, and so the Trenkoff imaging was able to pick that up. And again, that was just something that should have been fixed in the planning. Not not major thing, but again, for in terms of best practice, should have been fixed prior to treatment. And I'll just show you one very visual example of patient compliance right here. So this is a patient uh, being treated to the sacrum with three different fields. You can see just as soon as the beam went on, uh, his arm popped down into the beam right there. Uh, and so again, you know, what happens when the therapists leave the room and the beam is on, uh, again, uh, for elderly patients, things can happen that are not ideal. So this is an example where you could see that. Um, and again, in the, we've been comparing these images to the dose image. So we take the eclipse, estimate the surface dose, um, and then compare the Cherenkov images to the surface dose. And this was a fraction where everything was fine. And then this was a fraction where the, the arm went into the beam. Another case where a patient had the beam a little high on the chin. Uh, in this case, the therapist actually saw it in the Trenkoff image, went in and asked the patient to lift their chin higher. Uh, and then here's the beam after that uh, fixing of the chin position. And then subsequently, we went into the treatment plan and actually saw that, you know, there was actually, it was actually planned with their chin down a little bit and, and the beam in the chin, which was not ideal. Um, here's another whole breast case. Um, th again, most fractions of this case were totally fine, but then we found in fraction 15 of 16, um, you'll see in a second, some, some of the beam got a little high on the arm right here because the arm positioning was just a slightly different that day. And so again, not, not a major dose, but um, something that could be fixed if you could, you know, if you had 
uh, a visual of the Trinkoff image or an automated analysis of the Trinkoff image happening. And there's the, again, surface dose image on the left. Uh, uh, it's fraction one where things look pretty good. And then fraction 15, you see this dose high on the arm right there. Patient where uh, they had a large amount of bolus on this patient. And on one of the days, they just had one piece of bolus instead of two. And so, uh, again, we don't know the, the therapist, but they just um, sort of put the put the bolus in the center of the chest wall and didn't uh, have full coverage in terms of the exit part of the beam on the chest wall. And so again, this shows up surface dose image of what it should look like, Trenkoff image, uh, fraction four, where they did have two pieces of bolus, and then fraction 20, where they didn't only had one piece of bolus, and you see the, this sort of Trenkoff light coming out of the side of the bolus right here. So it was a different, different um, observation that day. Another Trenkoff image of bolus. Uh, here the bolus was not ideally placed laterally. And so you can see down at the bottom piece here, there's dose happening without uh, bolus coverage on the skin down there. Again, surface dose, ideal day on fraction one, and then uh, misplacement or slight misplacement on fraction 22. 